Hey folks, in this video, we're taking you on a trip to Detroit, Michigan. That's right, Detroit, Michigan. The Big D. Detroit. The Motor City. It's a city of neighborhoods, each with its own distinct flavor, and we're going to take you to some of our favorites. Detroit has some great food. And some beautiful parks. And a lot of public art. Some of the best public art we've seen. It's we're going beautiful to show art. It yes, absolutely. But before we get started, I'd just like to mention, if you don't have time to watch the whole video, we've included some chapter markers in the description below if you're watching it on YouTube. Just check out the description. You can jump to any part of the video that you'd like. So let's jump in right now. Let's go. Here we go. Detroit is laid out like a half wagon wheel with spokes radiating from Campus Marshes Park in downtown. And the main spokes are Fort Street, Michigan Avenue, Gratiot Avenue, East Lafayette, East Jefferson, and Woodward Avenue in the heart of downtown, which is where our tour starts. Downtown Detroit is full of beautiful historic buildings, most of which are still in use and in surprisingly great shape. There's a lot of new construction going on as well. Including this amazing looking thing going up on the edge of Greektown. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on. No, but it's interesting. It really is. And the People Mover, which is an elevated tram, loops around the downtown and adjoining neighborhoods. But downtown is lively and there's lots of activity. Activity yeah. everywhere. Lots of stuff going on. It's really nice to see a major city like this where the downtown is really happening because we see so many cities now where the downtown is dead, but Detroit certainly is not one of them. There are a number of beautiful parks in downtown, including this one called Lafayette Greens on West Lafayette Boulevard. Yeah, it has a nice sunny sitting area nestled among amazing organic gardens. Including plants we've never seen before, like this one known as Oscar Harry Balls. <laughs> Harry I've Balls. never heard this one before. But the best thing about Lafayette Greens for me is that it's located right next door to our next stop. Here we are at the corner of Griswold and Lafayette West in Detroit, probably the most famous hot dog corner in the world. <laughs> at least the most famous one in Detroit where we have American Coney Island right next door to Lafayette Coney Island. Many people have done this on YouTube. I had to come here and do it myself. We're gonna compare both of them and uh, see which one is best. I'm sure they're both gonna be good. So here we go. The first stop was American. It's right on the triangular shaped corner and has this really cool triangular shaped front window table. That's where I would sit if I was going there. Uh, it's a big place with kind of a, an old school soda shop vibe. And it's really cool because they wear the old fashioned paper hats. I really liked it a lot. And right next door is Lafayette, and this has more like an old lunch counter vibe. Bunch of older Greek guys working here and hanging out. I love this guy here. And I loved watching this guy pump out the conies. So there's just a few people working here, but they're probably pumping out as many as American next door. Just don't call it a hot dog. It's a Coney Island or a Coney dog. Topped with chili, raw onions, and mustard. And the special includes loose hamburger. Okay, folks, so here it is, the face-off. We got the American, the Lafayette. We're gonna try these side by side. And of course, we're trying it with the Verners. I can't tell the difference in looking at them. I get a Coney without the onions at both places. He loves hot dogs, or a Coney dog, or a Coney Island. <laughs> so which was better? I think they were both equally as good, and I'm not just trying to be fair. I don't know that I would notice the difference between the two of them, and I'm a hot dog fan. I'd go to either place. In fact, go to both places, get two dogs, give them both some love. I'd go back there in a minute. So our first meal in Detroit was a rousing success, for me anyway. So we think Detroit is one of the best cities for public art. You'll see it in every neighborhood. Yeah, there's a lot of great public art here. 
check out this cool muscle car mural because of course it's the Motor City. It's right on the edge of Greek town, just to the east of downtown. So our next stop was Greek town and it was smaller than we expected it. Yeah, it's really just a few blocks of Greek restaurants along Monroe Street. And it was pretty empty in the daytime. Yeah, we have a talent for going to busy neighborhoods at the least busy time of day. Somehow we always end up in places when everything is closed. And I found a great Greek pastry shop. Well, I went into Astoria Pastry Shop. It's a Greek pastry shop. And I got a couple things. There's so many choices. I got, of course, a baklava. I got a shredded wheat baklava. And then I got this thing called biscotti, which is kind of like a Greek biscotti. Yeah, the pastries here all looked amazing. They had so much. They had tarts and cannoli and cookies. And all kinds of baklava and phyllo dough pastries, like these yummy looking pistachio baskets. Those are great. And the stuff we got was really good. I would highly recommend going to Astoria for pastries. It's worth a stop. Yeah, it's really good. Just northeast of Greektown is the Eastern Market, which is a number of large open air sheds and apparently home to a rocking Saturday market, among other events. And it was pretty dead when we were there. As we said, we have a talent for that. <laughs> we have a talent for going to places. We're the that, only ones there. Closed. Yeah. There are a number of cool independent businesses around the perimeter of the market, including this cool looking place appropriately named the Motown Bistro which of course is another thing Detroit is famous for, Motown. And Eastern Market is home to some of the best murals in the city. Yeah, in fact, they have something called the Murals in the Market Festival. And you can check out muralsinthemarket.com for details on that. And almost every building has beautiful murals. Yeah, and I really love this one. And check out this really beautiful painting of people canning what appears to be chili or salsa. It's beautiful. And this one, this is my favorite. Is it, that a bullet hole? And look at the way the light penetrates the tip of her thumb. And the sun shining through her hand here, just incredible, love this piece. And there's some amazing commercial art as well. Why does this pig appear to be smiling? I don't know. <laughs> On the southern border of Eastern Market is Graship Central Market, which is really a big indoor meat market. And it's so much great looking meat. Check out this mountain of ribs, $3.99 a pound. That's a good price. That's a good price? Yeah, that's a good price. <laughs> I don't know, I just buy it. Mm -hmm. And this beef, including something I've never seen before, a Thor's hammer. Yep, and every part of a pig. Oh, check out these red hots and all kinds of sausage. This was like heaven to me. And I've never seen so many chicken wings in one place. Another poultry as well. In the afternoon, we headed to Midtown, which is home to Wayne State University. And Cass Avenue is the main drag here. A lot of university buildings, old Victorians, pretty cool spot. We like to walk through universities, we always do. And we had to stop at the Midtown Dog Park here where Charlie got to sniff some of the locals and check out his P-mail. Yep, he checked his P-mail. <laughs> but our primary destination in Midtown was Founders Brewing. We sat outside in the patio and had some great beers. I got a nitro breakfast out, and look at that head. Is that beautiful? I mean, you can see how good it looks. Look at that foam, look at that. Oh, that's delicious. And then we got a couple samples of things here. This is French Toast Bastard. I want to taste that. Wow. That smells like French toast with maple syrup. It smells like maple. I got the all day chill day. That's one of the best beers I've ever had. If you're an IPA fan, you'll hate this stuff. That's a lot of beer for me, by the way. 
maple mackinac fudge. It smells like chocolate and maple. It's good. Fabulous. This might be my favorite brewery ever. Ah, this is so good. Here's to Detroit. And Founders. And Founders for letting Charlie come on the patio. And the beer was so good here, I did something I swore I would never do. What, kiss your friend Joe? <laughs> uh, well, I still will never do that, sorry Joe. <laughs> but um, no, I bought a four pack of 12 ounce bottles nonetheless. How much was it? Uh, it was $17, <laughs> but I love the French toast bastard so much I had to get it. So another local food that I just had to try was Detroit style pizza. Which is also known as Greek pizza. Yeah, and so to get the lowdown, we asked an expert, a local, our server, Haley. Where should we go for pizza in Detroit? Definitely Nikki's Pizza. It's the best Detroit style pizza there is around. Buddy's is overrated. Uh, Nikki's is definitely the better choice. Nikki's? Yeah. We're going to Nikki's, Nikki's tonight. Nikki's. It's right by Greek Town. We're going to Nikki's. Awesome. Thank you. So back to Greek Town we went. Hey folks, where we are now is in front of Nikki's Pizza in Greek Town. We're gonna try Detroit for pizza for ourselves. We'll let you know how it is. Let's go. We had planned to eat inside the restaurant, however. Okay, folks, we have had a change of plans here. We had to pivot because we went in there and you can't eat pizza without beer or some decent wine. And while they did have a full bar, I'm a beer drinker, not a wine drinker. And the only thing they had was Bud Light or Miller. I cannot drink that swill, sorry. So we decided to get takeout, bring it back to the cubby van, and I'm drinking it with Bafo Brown Ale from Dark Horse Brewing Company, Marshall, Michigan, local. So we're gonna pour that in a minute. But first, the important stuff, here's the pizza. Let's see what it looks like. <laughs> Okay, that looks pretty good. Not normally a square pizza guy, but look at that. Look at this crustiness. We got the small that's four pieces. A large is eight pieces. Oh my goodness. Oh, look at that, nice and cheesy. Oh, it's heavy too. Look at that. Look at that. That looks delicious to me. Oh, a lot of sauce on there. So we got pepperoni and mushrooms. Here we go, we're gonna try it. I can't remember what Dave did. Dave, what did you give this pizza? Seven three. I'll be right back. Okay, I'll agree with Dave. He's the pizza king. Mmm. Okay. If you excuse me, I'm not gonna eat this pizza. I really liked it a lot. I would definitely go back there again. Um, different style pizza than what I'm used to, but it was it was delicious. It was delicious. I really liked it. Another winner. After dinner, we decided to walk around Greek Town, and wow, was it different than earlier in the day. Yeah, it was packed with people, and uh, this is the weekend before Halloween here. It was crazy. Yeah, we saw a number of these vehicles. It's called a slingshot. And of course, muscle cars everywhere because... It is the Motor City. The Motor City. <laughs> so after Greek Town, we headed back to Midtown where we had identified a decent looking place to boondock for the night near the medical center. And we took a final stroll along Woodward Avenue because I really wanted shots of this beautiful building, the Majestic Theater, which is right next door to Garden Bowl. This place was really cool. Any of them me? We're gonna f you up. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like, uh your opinion, man. And then back to the cubby van for the night. It was very peaceful and seemed to be really safe. Yeah, it felt really safe. safe. You hear a lot of bad things about Detroit, and I'm sure that there are, but we felt really good in this neighborhood. It was nice. And the next morning... Okay, so another thing that we're always looking for in a city is a great croissant. And I don't mean the kind of croissant you get at a Quickie Mart. I mean a real French croissant. Nicely laminated, flaky, light. Buttery. And uh, buttery, exactly. And I found this place called, uh, I 
believe it's pronounced Canel by Matt Neo, whoever Matt Neo is. We're going to go in and see how good the croissants are. This place was amazing. It had a great selection of delicious looking French pastries, including, of course, various types of croissants, baskets of them, in fact, just like you'd see in a bagel place. But with croissants. But with croissants. Okay, folks, this is the real deal. We came to the right place. Because this is just all about croissant. So what did we get? We got an almond croissant and a plain croissant. And how were they? Oh man, they were so good. They were some of the best croissants ever. They were really good. It's obviously a popular place because by the time we left, this place was packed. There's a line out the There's door. There's a long line. But we noticed the line forming across the street at a place called Iggy's Eggies, so we had to check that one out. Is it worth the line? Because we just stayed across the street and I saw this line No, it's here. totally it's like, worth it. It's so good. The, the breakfast burrito is amazing, and you can build your own like breakfast sandwich. The ingredients are always fresh, awesome. freshly made. We're gonna try this tomorrow. This is That's amazing. And it's so quick too. Thanks for the fashion show. Thank Pretty you. Awesome. Wow, well, you second person. Do you mind if I take a shot of you with that on? Because that's energy. awesome. Thank you. Wow. We didn't eat there, but next time we will. Yeah. I love eggs. Next time, Iggy's Eggies. After breakfast, we headed to one of the prettiest city parks in the country, Belle Isle Park. Yeah, wow. Is it beautiful? It's in the middle of the Detroit River with stunning views of the city and Windsor, Ontario. It's owned by the city, but managed as a state park, which in Michigan means it ain't free. How much does it cost? $10. 10 bucks. That's but it not was too worth bad. $10. Definitely worth 10 bucks. It's the largest city owned island park in the U.S., parts of which were designed by Frederick Law Olmsted. Best known for Central Park, among others. Lots of activity going on here on a Saturday morning. There's biking, kite flying, fishing. There's a beautiful beach here too. And I love the old casino built in 1908. East of the casino is the Udolf Garden Detroit. It has groom paths, many plants, and the Nancy Brown piece Carillion Tower. Yeah, which wasn't ringing when we were there. No bells. Again, we have for that talent. <laughs> but the real draw in this part of the park for us is the Anna Scripps Whitcomb Conservatory. It was beautiful. So many amazing exotic tropical plants. Like being in a jungle, tropical wonderland. Being from the Southwest, we of course love the cactus room as well. Why do you think they call this old man cactus? I don't know. Because it's hairy? I don't know. <laughs> but outside is a gorgeous koi pond. Oh yeah, you have to see that. There's so much to see and do here that we spent most of the day here at Belle Isle. And next to the conservatory, they have a really beautiful aquarium. Yeah, they do. And we wanted to check that out, but there were just lines of people trying to get in there. Right, so it's packed. Maybe it's next free. time we'll check out the aquarium. Again, yeah, 10 bucks entry into the park and all of that other stuff, the conservatory, the aquarium, everything is free. It's Highly included. recommended. It's just really a fabulous place. Yeah, it really is. We love that park. So one of the things we like to do when we go to a new city is visit the other neighborhoods. Yeah, as many as we can. Right. We don't stay downtown. We don't stay in the popular areas. We go out and seek the other neighborhoods. Because that way you really get the feel and the flavor of a city. And that's what brought us to Hamtramck. Spelled Hamtramck. But it's pronounced Hamtramck. Yeah, and it's not actually a neighborhood. No. But an independent city of 28,000 people surrounded by Detroit. It's a city within a city. For most of the 20th century, it was populated primarily by Polish Americans, but by 2013, it had become the first Muslim majority city in the entire US. And apparently most of the immigrants here now are from Yemen, Bangladesh, and Pakistan.
In addition to stores catering to Muslims, there are a number of older stores catering to the fashion whims of the African American population. And I love looking at the fashions in these windows, so interesting. And this was my favorite store, Days, that was run that day by Miss Pam, who informed us that this is Sunday go to church meeting fashion. Look at the hats and the dresses. So another thing we love to do is walk through cities on early Sunday mornings when the streets are empty. So the next morning, we walk through the financial district. And it's a collection of wonderful old landmark office buildings. It was listed on the U.S. National Register of Historic Places in 2009, in fact. And I think that there are 33 office buildings here that are on that National Register. They're still really beautiful. But our real destination here was the Guardian Building, and it is a must-see destination for architecture fans. It's stunning landmark Art Deco. It's a skyscraper. It was built in 1928. And of course, designated a historic landmark in 1989. You really got to see it for yourself. But in the meantime, here's a little preview. It's an amazing place and it's free. A block south of the Guardian Building is the iconic statue that you'll see pictured on the Detroit logo emblazoned all over town, known as the Spirit of Detroit. This 26-foot cast bronze statue was designed by sculptor Marshall Fredericks and opened in 1958. The cost of the statue was $58,000, the equivalent of today about half a million, and the sculptor waived his fee. He didn't accept the money. Wow. He just donated it. South of the Spirit of Detroit, you'll find another great collection of public sculpture at Hart Plaza, starting with the Monument to Joe Lewis, known as The Fist, a 24-foot long sculptor of the boxer's arm by Robert Graham. You'll also see Transcending, a tribute to Michigan labor. And Pylon by Isamu Noguchi. And the Horace E. Dodge and Son Memorial Fountain. Which wasn't on when we... There. That's our talent. Because that's our talent. <laughs> and here's the moving Gateway to Freedom sculpture by Edward Dwight. It's part of the Gateway to Freedom International Memorial to the Underground Railroad. It depicts Detroit resident George de Baptiste pointing the way to freedom across the river to Canada to six fugitive slaves. Next, we did what so many locals do on a beautiful Sunday afternoon, and that is stroll the river walk. It's not a long walk, but it's really beautiful. Yeah, it's really nice. And east of Hart Plaza along the river walk is the GM Rensen, which is the General Motors Renaissance Center and is the headquarters of General Motors. It also houses shops, eateries, a 73-story hotel, and a concept car showroom. And then we spent the rest of this gorgeous fall morning just enjoying the Riverwalk. Detroit was so pretty. It really is. Our final neighborhood, and perhaps my favorite, was Corktown. Corktown. It was really pretty. It's the oldest existing neighborhood in all of Detroit. Michigan Avenue is the main drag through Corktown, and it's mostly brick here. It's really cool. A lot of brick sidewalks, industrial sheep lofts. And Corktown was the home of Tiger Stadium until 2009, when it was demolished and replaced by the Detroit Police Athletic League's corner ballpark. And of course, lots of condos for the hipsters. I'm a hipster. You are? 
maybe a hipster's grandpa. <laughs> a hipster? Corktown has a number of cool looking eating and drinking establishments along Michigan Avenue. South of Michigan Avenue, the residential area is very hip and laid back. Yeah, lots of hipster families hanging out and generally looking hip. Like you? <laughs> yeah, like me. <laughs> and of course, the residential area is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. It was listed in 1978. It's a mix of detached homes and townhouses in the federal, Victorian, and Queen Anne style alongside some newer modern structures. And we found a nice place to boondock here for our last night. And if I were to move to Detroit, this is a neighborhood I'd want to live in. Really? It's very walkable. Yeah, <laughs> me too, me too, because I'm a hipster. And before closing, I'd like to share one more piece of exquisite public art that we saw during our night in Midtown by Detroit artist Fell 3000 Feet. That's his name? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> I hope you didn't fall 3,000 feet. <laughs> it takes heart to fight for something that so many consider a lost cause. A strong mind to breathe life into that cause and prove so many wrong. Keep your heart true and your mind strong, Detroit. And remember that sign I showed at the beginning of the video? Say nice things about Detroit. And you know, I think we have, and you should too. Visit Detroit. Give it some love. And say nice things. We'll see you on the road.